New developments this evening involving tainted meat packaged by a company owned by Chicago-based Sara Lee. Bacteria in the meat sickened dozens of people and four persons died. Kevin Roy is in the newsroom with the latest on the story for us. Kevin? Sara Lee, one of the most iconic food companies in all of the United States, and whether you realize it or not, most notable for their pies, pastries, and breads. And with their endeavors into the meats and ice cream market, at one point, the Sara Lee brand was almost unstoppable, especially by the year 1987, having over 3,000 employees and a total sales worth of $200 million. However, just as their brand would rise, it would fall from the company's catastrophic financial instability all throughout the 1990s, especially in 1998, to the unfortunate deaths involving 15 people connected to the Sara Lee brand all throughout the United States. We discuss the Sara Lee recall of 1998, and as usual, viewer discretion is advised. The story of Sara Lee begins all the way back in 1935, when a man named Charles Lubin would come up with the idea and brand of Sara Lee, along with his brother-in-law, Arthur Gordon, when they both decided to go into business together, originally starting their brand in the city of Chicago, Illinois. Working together, the brothers would buy a multitude of community bake shops all throughout the city of Chicago and were after the expansion of starting with three bakeries, they would open up seven bakeries. After a steady few years of growth, come 1945, and along with the name of the company, Sara Lee was born, when the owner of the company, Charles Lubin, named one of their dessert items, the cheesecake, after his daughter Sara Lee. And just like that, the name of the company was born. And come 1956, with years of vast and steady growth up to this point, Sara Lee would be bought out by a company known as Consolidated Foods, Years following this acquisition, Sara Lee would have a very unique way of expanding, such as buying out competition or possible companies of expanding their brand, such as C.D. Kenny, a multitude of Piggly Wiggly's stores, and the entirety of a brand called Eagle Supermarket. However, come 1966, the Federal Trade Commission would order Sara Lee to break apart due to not gaining too big of a monopoly. So with that, Sara Lee would let go of Eagles and Piggly Wiggly's. However, that still didn't stop their tremendous expansion of growth, because over the course of years, Sara Lee would still buy out a multitude of companies not associated with foods, such as Heinz in 1977, Champion 10 years later in 1989, and Playtex 2 years later in 1991. And believe me, these are just some of the notable companies that they have bought out over the course of years. And after years of slow and steady growth, from the buying out of other companies, they looked almost unstoppable. But as mentioned at the beginning of this video, almost unstoppable, in 1998, the Sara Lee brand would take a massive hit in their net worth brand and likeness overall when in December of 1998, a recall of sheer magnitude with the Sara Lee brand would occur. Bad meat from Sara Lee has prompted a nationwide class action lawsuit. The meat contained a bacteria called Listeria. Several dozen people were infected with it. A week and a half ago, Sara Lee voluntarily recalled more than $50 million worth of hot dogs and other meat products. The attorney filing the suit says there could still be more people out there who got sick because of the meat. It was discovered that in December of 1998 that a multitude of Sara Lee meat products, including, but not limited to, hot dogs, cold cuts, and a multitude of other Sara Lee items affected with a dangerous bacteria known as Listeria, an extremely contagious bacteria commonly transmitted via food. We're soon following, it was reported that a whopping 15 million pounds of food linked to the Sara Lee brand was recalled due to Listeria's easily transmittable properties, along with a tragically reported unidentified 15 deaths due to the passing away from consuming Sara Lee products. It's clear, Sara Lee had quite the catastrophe on their hands. But this only asks us, how did this tragedy happen, both involving Sara Lee and the people affected by this recall? Well, as it turns out, months earlier, in August 1998, the Listeria outbreak would occur in Zeeland, Michigan, when it was discovered that a multitude of Sara Lee factories and farms were contaminated with the Listeria bacteria due to a lack of proper health measures when taking care of food. And as mentioned, due to Listeria's very spreadable properties, along with having very underlying symptoms, when a person would be infected with the bacterial virus, those two combinations would prove to be an extreme problem, because over the course of four months, all throughout the United States, contaminated products involving Sara Lee were shipped all throughout grocery stores across the USA, including, but not limited to, ballpark frank hot dogs, high-grade franks, Turkey Hill lunch meats, and as mentioned, Sara Lee products overall, 
It should also be noted that Listeria is a very deadly bacteria if left untreated along with that can often affect unborn babies, newborns, and the elderly. And that's why in the months following the invisible outbreak, it was reported that at least three of those deaths came from two miscarriages and one stillborn. And I think it's safe to say, we can say in that case, at least a quarter of those adult deaths would more than likely occur with the elderly. Now, due to the anonymity of the victims affected by this outbreak, it's hard to say when the first and last confirmed death involving this Listeria outbreak happened. But what we do know is that over 100 people in the course of months were all heavily sickened via consuming and by having contact with other victims of the Listeria outbreak along with more reports of deaths involving adults and newborns, it's clear a sign was starting to emerge with these deaths. However, eventually, over the course of months, a lot of companies and brands were starting to notice a link between the sickenings and their products, where in turn, come over the course of months, individual recalls over the country were occurring, and with it, thousands of millions of pounds of food was thrown out and discarded across the United States just to stop the spread of the Listeria outbreak. Millions of pounds, millions of dollars worth of ballpark francs and other Sara Lee cold cuts were pulled from store shelves nine days ago. Since then, the number of people to become sick from Listeria bacteria after eating the meat has grown to 42 nationwide, including four deaths. Now, a man from southwest suburban Chicago Ridge says he, too, has had the flu-like symptoms, has even been hospitalized for listeriosis, and is filing this class action lawsuit against Sara Lee. Frank Paluch continued to undergo medical testing late today. His attorney says Paluch was seriously ill for seven days before getting tested. It's tough around this flu flu period time to determine which what it is, whether it's the flu or food poisoning. Um, I recommend anybody that ate any of these products to get tested. You just don't want it to go to the next stage where it could be de uh, deadly. With antibiotics, healthy people usually fight off listeriosis with no more than flu-like symptoms. But if it progresses, it can cause meningitis and kill. Most at risk, pregnant women, the elderly, and people with weak immune systems. The recalled Sara Lee meat products include the National Ballpark, Grillmaster, and High Grade brands and are coated either P261 or 6911. The lawsuit alleges Sara Lee and its Bilmar Foods unit in Zeeland, Michigan, knew from prior health violations that there were problems at the plant. It seeks compensation for medical expenses and punitive damages and could grow to include hundreds of people. Everybody that ate this product is a part of the class action. Uh, the, the second part of the purpose of the class action, not only to inform the public, but we want to set up a medical monitoring program so people that did eat this can be tested. As mentioned, once it was discovered that the Sara Lee brand was the main company responsible for the Listeria outbreak, retailers and companies quickly got to work taking all Sara Lee and associated brands off the of store shelves. But even then, deaths and sickenings were still occurring in connection with the Listeria outbreak. So as another way to stop the outbreak, Sara Lee, along with the FDA, would shut down the original plant in Zeeland, Michigan. It would as well be discovered that the primary products affected with the Listeria was products containing the label codes of P261 and 6911, in turn making it easier to trace which products were infected with the Listeria outbreak. However, that still didn't stop the countless lawsuits coming in against the Sara Lee brand. In turn, where come 2001, Sara Lee would plead guilty to negligence and mass shipping of contaminated products across the USA. Sara Lee also agreed to pay $4.4 million in civil, civil, and criminal charges in efforts to, in hopes to repair their wrongs. But going back to 1998, in December, it was reported that Sara Lee was closing certain plant lines and had reported that they had spent around $25 million in renovations and cleanup efforts in effort to revise their factories. Because as entailed, it was reported that leading up to the outbreak, the Sara Lee factories would often be contaminated with cockroaches, old meat, and debris, all riddling their factories. However, it was still reported that an attorney named Philip J. Green, an attorney located in Grand Rapids, Michigan, reported that the Sara Lee brand would only be charged for the time with a misdemeanor charge for unknowingly and unintentionally sending out contaminated products across the United States, but were still given a misdemeanor charge for not going by the proper and correct way of maintaining their factories. Sara Lee would also begin to revamp their health and safety policies in the wake of this recall effort, such as reheating packaged items that were already cooked 
washing and sanitizing hands with hot soapy water for at least 20 seconds with as well as cleaning off the equipment properly used when done such as cutting boards dishes and utensils they would as well inform the public to not eat any soft cheeses of the multitude and not to drink any unspiralized milk and or eat any potential and drink items that would come from it and of course to examine and observe any and every expiration date of any food kind whether that be perishable pre-cooked and or ready to eat items. But come 1999, when by this point, the Sara Lee brand was dealing with a lot, their sales were starting to take a notable dip that one year beforehand in 1998 were already affected by heavily on just trying to fix their mistakes alone. Not to mention the money that one year beforehand they had lost due to their product being taken off of store shelves. Also, people too paranoid to buy their products because of what happened to the recall in 1998. All of Sara Lee's problems would just transfer into the next year, where in turn, the media attention was yet to die down from Sara Lee and the recall associated with it. The backlash was so huge with Sara Lee that they were forced to lay off multiple workers and employees in their own town of Michigan just due to the overreaching fear that the recall was having all throughout the USA and in lots of respects, rightfully so, due to the overwhelming reports of sickenings and deaths that were occurring due to Sara Lee and their associated brands. However, come the turn of the new millennium when the Sara Lee brand had held on and eventually their sales and net income overall has started to take a bounce back into the green. And come 2001, when by this point the Sara Lee brand had been in the hotbed for a couple years now, it was reported that certain higher ups for the Sara Lee company knew that certain food products that they were shipping was contaminated, all reported to be from the factory in Zeeland, Michigan. However, reports vary due to this due to federal investigations and whether how true this was. But regardless, prosecutors saw no conclusive proof on whether this knowingly shipping of contaminated products was happening. However, what the feds did release was all the way back in December of 1997 that when food safety inspectors went to investigate the factory, reported to investigators that plant workers were aware of a listeria problem in the factory. One year before, the Sara Lee would even start the recall of 35 million pounds of meat products that were contaminated with listeria, with it being reported from the USDA worker that told a Bill Maher employee that, quote unquote, they would have never known that this was our product since listeria has about a two week incubation period, with it also being reported that the inspector said it was okay for the plant to sell their product as long as they said if they weren't 100% sure if their products had listeria in it. But regardless, these uh, accusations, it was reported that Sara Lee would eventually plead guilty to being indirectly responsible for the listeria outbreak that reportedly sickened over 100 people and killed 15. However, following this guilty plea, months and years later, the Sara Lee brand would seemingly recover from this major setback in brand history, and eventually, their sales and public image would recover from this major dark moment in their company history. And other than a few minor blemishes in the years following, such as in 2015 when it was reported that multiple bread products from Sara Lee were recalled due to glass being found in the bread, and even as late as 2021 when it was reported that Sara Lee products were shipped out after reportedly not having the proper allergy disclosure information on the boxing. But if you want a full video into all of Sara Lee's recalls, please let me know in the comments. So overall, the Sara Lee recall of 1998 was a tragic and very avoidable one that really should have not happened. I think that everyone could agree upon that, but at least within those dark and very unforgettable moments, in not just food and safety history, but even world history, without tragedies like these, we will not learn the needed lessons in food safety that protects us all in the modern day. It's a bit of an obvious thing to say, but a true one at that. But with that, I've been Skipper Son, and I hope you all have a great day.